Good to go. are unbelievable. I have the worst crew working for me ever. You. You're always fighting with everybody. That's your job, right? Adversity. I, I get it. But I got to tell you something. Adversity is not a good thing. <clears throat> okay? You need to recognize that. And hey, you. Sorry. Is it is am I on? Listen. You are a boatload of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real funny. Um no, you are. You know why? Because while he's trying to provide the right level of adversity, you got a problem of pointing that out. We know that adversity is not good. But, you know, too much salt. What happens when you look back in judgment? Mm -hmm. You become a pillar in a temple, all right. A pillar of salt. Look it, we, we got things to do, okay? We don't have time for fighting. That's right, world peace. And here's to that. And thank you, Lord. We trust you. All right, you ready? guys ready? All right, three, two, one. What's up, guys? There's nobody there. Okay. <laughs> He's like, lost it. <clears throat> no, I found it. The it is up there. And I will tell you that it is real. It is in control. Not by controlling us, but because the laws and statutes that we've been provided with, they determine what's going to happen. So if we know what they are, and we abide by them, if we abide with the word, did you catch that? If we abide with the word, then the word abides with us. It's not that hard. We're not in control as to say, like puppets. The control is actually up to us. But because the Lord has spoken and what he says is, those blessings and curses our truth upon truths depends on what you do with it. Knowledge is not wisdom. Knowledge is just knowing. Wisdom is what you do with the knowledge. There's a duality happening. If God said, I challenge you to a duel, what would you say? What would you say? What would you do? Would you accept? Well, let me give you a little bit of bad news. You don't have a choice. We live in the presence of light and dark, good and evil, love and hate. These two things are fruits. They're things that 
are, but they are not. They exist, but only after they're created or made. It's not surprising to me that there are people that can see this non-dual perspective of the teachings of Jesus. <clears throat> because when you can combine these two together, together but separate, with a little sliver down the middle, that little line of enmity, the DMZ between a war that should not exist. But once your eyes are open and you can see evil, you've opened the door. And its desire is to have you. But you must master over it. you don't master over it, it, the evil, will master over you. <laughs> and then comes fear. This stuff. My eyes are open. I see it now. Bad, bad. It's everywhere. What do I do now? I'm frightened. It's the wolf. It scatters the flock. The good shepherd, he doesn't run. He says, come here. Get over here. Let me tell you what's going on. Let me help you to understand so you can have courage. Courage to fulfill prophecy, not sit and wait for something to happen. There are times to be still. God will fight for you. But if you're hiding in fear, that's not peace and stillness. There's a difference. Are you getting all this? at you. I'm reflecting on my entire life, on what it's actually taken. Enough of a beating to understand all this. And um, But I do understand it. So two things have happened. I have a, a vision of what the future could be. I also have acceptance of the bad that has already happened and that I know that while what a lot of people thought that they did to me was for bad, I knew it was for good. It allowed me to become who I am, who you could be, and to be able to tread on Scorpio. put my hand in the viper's den pull that guy out right in the face it's licking me and I'm like no I'm sorry you don't count anymore <clears throat> the accuser <clears throat> the Satan, the devil he doesn't count unless you worship him Any time that you devote to this demon is worship. That's why we call it devotion. Jesus said, tell him to flee from you, and he's gone. And it's over that easily. 
if you're pointing him out as affecting other people, you are as being as one with everybody else worshiping. You're making excuses for people that are doing not so good things. Sin is self-inflicted neglect. It's going against the law of the one, God, Yahweh, yod heh vav -Heh. That's what you're doing. You're fighting against something that you can't conquer. That you can't overcome. Sound familiar? That's the double-edged sword. <clears throat> Who was it that promised a three and a half year peace? We'll just call it ministry with the many. Sounds familiar. You have to see the forces of light and dark in the way that God sees them. In Psalm 139.12, we find that God sees these two things as the same. Light is light. Darkness is as light to you. There is only one great light, and I'm not worshiping the sun. That great light is God, and he calls to him all the lesser lights. He shines into the darkness, and because of his law that is unbreakable, the darkness cannot overcome it. The darkness will conform will not win. That's the truth. You cannot outsmart God. It can't be done. But there's things that we don't understand. Could there be the greatest of love if there was no death? Could Eve usher sin into the world by committing a sin? two ways this will play out. In the end, if we fail and we wear out the earth, we will look upon it and say, what is this we have done as the gods that we think we are? But if in praise and worship and respect and fear of God, we will look upon our world and say, what is this you have done? All of creation screams out that he's with us everywhere. It's in our numbers, it's in our songs, it's in the structures of our weeks, of our music. <clears throat> but you have to remember, his word saves. If we rebel, then we're using our words. And our words will condemn us. Alright, was that dramatic enough? You guys get all that? <clears throat> okay. We good? What do you mean we're still live? <coughs> ah, sorry. 
So, you want a duel? Are you willing to get in the ring with the devil? I got this. Take your fingers, press them into his eye sockets until you feel the bridge of his nose right at the bottom of the V of victory. Draw those fingers, shake off whatever muck that is, and say, You won't cast your eyes upon me anymore. You don't deserve to look at me. Because I know who I'm a child of and who I work for, and it's not you. No more striking of this horse's heel and causing me to stumble backwards. I plow forward. I know what our future is and what it could be. I don't have a spirit of fear. And I definitely don't fear you. Axel Rose put it best. Get in the ring, corksucker. Cork. Sucker. Johnny dangerously had a great way of putting things, didn't he? You Fargan bastages. <laughs> ice, ice holes. <laughs> All right, man. I'm tired. I want to play pinball already. <sighs> All right. So, so like, God has created this dual world for us. In existence with the two forces of light and dark. We should seek to find the light. That our deeds, whatever it is that we do, can be shown. It doesn't glorify you because, yeah, look what I did. No, it's glorifying God because the good works that you do are already predestined things that he said could be done. Where you rebel against those are the things you have to hide in the dark. You don't want people to, you know, you don't want people to know you're like that, do you? Ah, uh, mm, use that guy, damn drunk. Yeah, um, you don't want to be that, right? But it starts with forgiveness and not judging because you know that there is a judge. Jesus said, even though you might not hear, not my words, but even though you not might not hear my words, or his words, I'll say them, but even though you don't hear my words, I don't judge you. There is another that judges you. Is God judging you? Or does that verse mean that, you know, the, the bad guy is judging you? I'll say his name. That other one, he gets a small S in my book. <clears throat> He's the helper to me. The accuser. If you're accused of something that you're doing wrong, uh, shouldn't you correct it? Ready to say, no, Jesus died for me, I'm good. I don't have to worry about that. That's kind of shallow. That's a lie. Because you will be judged for whatever works it is that you do under this law that we can't escape. <clears throat> it is that simple. Children know it. They don't see color. They don't care where that little kid came from and that little kid until his parents teach him to be all proud about where he came from. He doesn't even know where he came from. He is... I 
like that. That child is... <clears throat> I don't even have to say anything else after that. That little child is a I am. I am who I am. And the interesting thing with children is they respect that, well, you are who you are. But then there's us. Let's ride bicycles. Let's make mud pies. Let's do whatever together in friendship. And it's not until the powers of uh, the parents get involved that these children decide that it's time for war. They teach them to look behind instead of plowing forward. And then they're at odds with each other all of a sudden because of something that people did that are already dead. They're gone. Are the dead rising from their graves yet for you? Mm -hmm. Didn't expect that, did you? We're misreading our scriptures. They can help us can destroy us. Jam-packed full of stumbling blocks. And we have found every single one over and over and over as history keeps repeating itself and we learn from nothing. saying we don't learn nothing. We learn from nothing. You want to know what a lie is? A lie is a very amazing thing because it exists. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bug flying around. <clears throat> it exists means it is, but it isn't. A lie is an amazing thing because it's nothing, and yet because of ambiguity, it's everything. Yeah. And omniscient because of. You don't know what it is that you're fighting. But I can teach you. If you're willing to learn. If you have the patience. My number, 716-229-1343. If you're old school, you can convert that to, you know, where they used to change numbers and letters and whatever. And this is a random number, which I know is not a random number but given to me by my company, <coughs> phone company. And if you turn it into letters, you can create the phrase. <clears throat> hmm. That deserves a double. Sin to see why one die. But as a phone number, it'd be sin to see why one die. 716 229 1343, or you can surf to www God please help me and please help me dot org. And you'll find my information there. I love you guys. Let's play some pinball. And, like, I think I need another beer. Shalom. How was that? Cut! All right, here we go.
Should we, uh... Oh, well, I guess I got a little bit left. Uh, um, maybe I should drink that one. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Which cup do I want to drink from? I don't know. I guess it's the one you choose. you choose the one that you want to drink from and not all the time hey let's blow some shit up first and then we'll then we'll play pinball sorry Bing. Whoa, no. Damn. this is a great scene to go through because like it's just chaos. Everything's breaking loose. People running. Now, Hold on. Now, he says, Marcus. There's something interesting about the mark. The mark of the beast uh, causes your head <laughs> to receive a head wound or head healing. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of times in Scripture where we see something smashing into something's head or laying on somebody's head or affecting somebody's head. Sealing somebody's head forehead. You've got the Jews that run around today with a little box of scripture. And, in irony, at, you know, at the same time, the little strap thingy that kind of puts a, puts a damper on the left arm. The left arm. Remember, there's right and left. Good and bad. Right, righteous, good, Bad, left. Why do all the presidents have left hands? <clears throat> I don't know, but who cares? Um, and even in boating, did you know that the, the light on the right side of the boat is green? That's because the stars are always right. And the left side of the boat is red. Why? Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Depending on which side of a buoy you get on, <laughs> whether it's green or red, um, yeah. Um, you'll find something out the hard way. But in this scene right here, there's a number on the front of this vehicle, 142. And I used to live at an address, 142 King Street. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to 15, which is God's number that never appears in the Bible because 10 and 5 added together, 15, are grace and perfection. And they don't go together. You do not see those two letters, except for in the Tetragrammaton, I think, displayed in the Bible. So I moved up, leveled up. But the mark is an interesting thing because we see that there's the Jews that have the little boxes on their forehead. We hear about the mark of the beast where he marks your forehead. Do you remember what David did to Goliath? With a single stone. <coughs> he marked his forehead. <laughs> and what you should notice about that battle is guess what? They were going to become slaves to one or slaves to the other. Is that a coincidence that it played out that way? Is it a coincidence that the little shepherd boy delivered the stone to the forehead? And that he didn't want all this armor? Armor and stuff is fear. He said, I can't move with this stuff. You're asking me to fear and do my job? I can't do my job if I'm in fear. I can't be a, a, a brave 
fearless, sorry to use the term, but warrior, for God, <laughs> and and love people to death? <laughs> no. Get this stuff off of me. It doesn't fit me. And, and, you know, it's more than just it was a difference between stature and size and it didn't fit him. It didn't fit the purpose. He could not be fearless if he's all like some kind of turtle wrapped up in a shell and I just tuck in my arms and legs and whatever and I'm good. Which is another interesting creature because um, the head and legs are the facilities with which you work. They're your thought process and they cause your feet to walk in a certain way and they cause your hands to act in a certain way and guess what? If you cut the head off, the snake dies. You don't have to crush and bruise the head of the snake. You have to know how to cut it off and say, I'm in control. But you have to accept responsibility too. It's not, you know, it's, it's good, but it's bad, right? Everything is. You have to accept responsibility that I'm in control. I'm going to take charge of this thing. It's up to me to do what's right that I be accepted. <clears throat> Simple, right? Easy peasy. But uh, that Mark, there's another interesting thing about Mark. And I learned this recently. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Tovaya Singar. Guess what he did? He demonstrated something to me of putting the cart before the horse. If you read Mark before you read Matthew, something weird is going to happen. You'll read Mark, which was penned before Matthew, okay? And it seems to make, you know, it's kind of going to hit home and you'll get information. But then, if you read Matthew, you're going to go, well, what is all this new stuff? Why is all this extra stuff added? What, it seems like Mark has been flavored to come out in a different way. Now, the reverse can also happen. Remember, we're talking about a duality, and you can flip this thing upside down or backwards, or however you want to kind of conceive that concept. And guess what happens? If you read Matthew first... It will put in place all of the idealism, the things that you need to or could perceive. If you're not a good judge, what happens with judge, you start, inter, you know, there's a possibility you could intermingle evidence. You could take something from here and just because it looks close to here, plug it in because you say, well, it's, it's close enough so this must apply and it leads me. It, it, it's a familiar spirit. It draws you into that area. And guess what? <clears throat> if you read when and, and the Bible is written and, and displayed this way, you'd want it to be in chronological order, right? Even They're the Gospels. What difference does it matter what order they're in? But it, when you put Matthew first, it plants these, quote-unquote, and I hate to put it this way, but it's true, seeds. And these seeds will sprout and grow as you head into Mark and then read Mark because you will presuppose a lot of the information that's missing in Mark that was in Matthew. But because you, what, are wise in your own eyes and know it, guess what? You, you, you just assume that it's there. <coughs> If you are somebody and you're listening to this and you have not read those two Gospels and you really don't know them in that way, you haven't studied them. And what I would say is jump into your Bible or whatever. Listen to Mark if you have to. David Duchesne does something very interesting. He has a, uh, a clip where... And it's funny, and not, and kind of strange, but it's really weird. 
that what he says, I want you, he, he does a presentation at some big giant forum, okay? And as he's announced that he's going to go out there and, and read the book of Mark, which is going to take enough hours that it takes to take a train ride from wherever to wherever, but you're in economy seats. I can't remember how it's where they were going and the de I remember the important details but as he's announced okay that information is given and then David Duche says I want you to hear this as if you have heard it for the first time and then he proceeds to read it as if he's a news reporter okay and that's the book of Mark and it's weird that he says all of those things and then and then reads the book of Mark. And he talks about how there was somebody else that actually memorized the whole thing, took him so many months, and but he hasn't done that, so he'll actually read but it's a good it's a good way to, to listen to the book of Mark being read to you. But then after you do that, then go listen or read the book of Matthew. And see if you can see where it looks like all this extra stuff that then turns what could be maybe a story that is a little more believable to something that's, wait a minute, it looks like a bunch of stuff has been added in here. And what it does is it takes the, you know, the unbelievable and makes it believable uh, or takes, you know, takes the unbelievable and just presents it and causes like a, a conundrum with you. It, it, it's obvious. I, I, I caution you, do not, do not get very interested in Tavia Singer unless you are ready to give up the idea that Christ was the Messiah. Because what will happen is, is he's tossing a cookie in front of you and you're going to grab it and he'll throw a couple of good things in the way and here's what you're not prepared for. <clears throat> you're, please don't disconnect at this point in the video. You are not prepared for how you should be able to defend the idea and the teachings of what Jesus taught and why he is the Messiah. If you if you heard that statement and you just off look, oh my God, it's nineteen nineteen up on the clock there. Isn't that weird? Um, <laughs> patterns everywhere. Uh, if you if you try to listen to Tavia because you're struggling with the idea of does Christianity is it real that kind of a thing you're going to lose your Jesus. You're going to lose the idea of having a Messiah. Now, the problem with the church is that they think Jesus died for their sins and so on. And he did because he came to teach us. He was a good teacher. He is a good teacher if you believe that he is still alive. That's up to you to decide but as far as being the Messiah, the Anointed One, 100%. That simple. Be careful if you do, do decide to listen to Tobias Singer. I, I caution you. I'm not saying he's the devil. But he will make you reject what? And I'll be respectful to him and say who just might be the Messiah. And respect for all, I'll put it in just that way. And respect for Islam, I'll say, yeah, maybe he was just a prophet. And respect for Christians, I'll say that he is the Messiah. I don't need to give you my position on it. I'm just trying to warn you and help you so that you can make a decision. Ultimately, my goal is to tie all three of these Abrahamic families together. And I can do that if I'm given the chance. I can't do shit if I'm not. Because 
what is is not, but yet might be. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Sounds like they could use your help. All right, anyway. The world can be a help. Be a rescuer. Be a rib. Let's do this. I said get down. I will do that. You shouldn't shoot your own guy. Why do you think they call it shooting yourself in the foot? <laughs> Coincidence, right? I'm sorry. Why do you think they call it shooting yourself in the foot? And then what is and then what does Cole say? Sir, good shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, Dom is down. Better go help him out. Get up. Wait a minute, I didn't even hit the X. Hold on a minute. That was strange, guys. That was weird. I didn't even hit my control. I, I know I did not. I know which thumb I did not use. Um, I did not hit the thing to help him get up. All I did was just run to him as soon as he needed help. That's weird. That is weird. <laughs> I just want to like go quit and pray now and then <laughs> like go, uh, God, uh, is that you? <laughs> that's, that's freaking weird. Okay. Hang on, everybody. <laughs> Sniper. They're just like pounding them out, ain't they? Oh, hit the tree. One, two, buckle my shoe. Or take off my sandal.
get tough. These guys are big, man. See ya. 
that shit. I dare you. Oh, wait, is he gone? He's gone. Oh, last guy. Hi, buddy. Oh, shit. Oh, got me. <laughs> oh, Dom. Sorry, Dom. Let me help you out, buddy. Get up. Come on. Are you kidding me? Where's he at? Where the hell are you at, Tom? Oh, shit. I'm gonna get myself killed for my own guy. Where is he? I'll be back here. Where the hell is Dom? This is where I, this is kind of funny because Baird must like, Baird must be Hispanic. He's one of them blonde headed Puerto Rican guys. <laughs> Baird, turn that shit off. All right, now let's play some pinball. help us. If you can help me to help us, that would be appreciated too. <laughs> Somehow I'm inclined to think that it's up to us. <laughs> or at least we should try. <laughs> if we wait on you, it's like saying, what good are you? <laughs> it's... It's like God, you know, we're, we're like saying, eh, God's got this. He can do everything. God's like, what the hell do you think I created you for? You're supposed to serve me. <laughs> you know, good and faithful servant. Am I talking about, you know, am I talking about myself? <laughs> you know, uh, like, am I the waiter or some shit? <laughs> Oh, man. I'm going to get my ass kicked down for being, for being a smart ass, but it's the truth. Here we go. Ay, ay, ay. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that went right in there, dude. Oh, yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in big trouble. <coughs> I'm going to get taken down in my pinball game. And maybe because I decided to just go out and start killing people. Or bugs, whatever they are. They kind of look like people, but they call them grubs. Sure. Let's hit the next city first and show that we're interested in actually making it to Milwaukee. Good grief. I'm like way in the hole. I got one ball left. No free ball. No options. This really looks bad. Oh, shit. Ah, there we go. All right, guys. You know what? I'm going to take that as a sign. I hope you enjoyed today's teaching. I'm serious. Don't laugh at me. I'm serious about it, right? Oh, if I'm in a match. Um, take it seriously. 
We're existing in a duality. All this non-duality teaching is nice if you can join these two together, but you have to understand what the purpose is for both of them because God, he, you know, Isaiah 45, 7, sorry. I keep reverting back to this because I have to take even one little mustard seed out of the scripture and build upon it because every little mustard seed should be as good as a brick, a cornerstone, because it's all truth. Isaiah 45, 7 says, I form light and I, quote unquote, create darkness. I make peace and I, quote unquote, create evil. So back to the idea of where works are important. What is formed and made? Light and peace. What is created? Darkness and evil. But that entire verse says, I form light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You have to accept that. You have to grapple with that. Evil, not calamity. Calamity is still evil, right? As compared to peace. Come on. Don't water down the wine. Accept it for what it is, and it will help you to be what it is that God intended us to be. We can grow. We can learn. We can appreciate the wisdom that's been given to us in Scripture. And more importantly, we can appreciate the one who died to come and bring that message to us, the good news. Um... Why is this so hard? <laughs> then their eyes were opened. And man, was it impossible to just close those sons of bitches. Just saying. Shalom. Interesting numbers. Let's do a three by. John four four. Isaiah four four. Psalms forty four. John 3, 1 to 3, Isaiah 13, 3, Psalms 31, 3, Proverbs 31, 3, Revelation 19, the whole thing. Got it? Alright. Come on, Lord. Please get me to Milwaukee. I love you on the tea party. What is up here? Part of me is lazy and I just want to like get there immediately. I realize there's some work to be done. Ta-da! Oh no! Hey man, shoot the stoplight!
Woo. That looked dangerous, didn't it? It was. Get out of there. Talk about work. Oh, man. Trying to keep me on my toes. Good thing I'm not drinking or something, right? Yeah, get out of there. Get out of there. Duh. When I do something so stupid as that, I just want to quit. I sit there doing like this ballet with a pinball machine as a dancing partner. And then what do I do? Blow it. You're headed for what? I love that. No! Shit. Freeze! Oh, thank you very much, Lord. Help me out. Red light multi ball. <laughs> sure. Bummer, man. What happened? Destination, Phoenix. I'm hurting. Red, double rats. Damn, and that's it. I can't believe I just blew through two games that fast.
Isaiah, Luke, John. <laughs> Isaiah 11, 6. Luke 4, 6 to 9. John 20. Read the whole thing. Last target there. Oh. Man. Wow. These have been the worst games I think I've had in like a long time, man. Looks like, you know. I can't help it if the stuff's like flying down the side. I mean, you know. You can only be so much of a wizard. <laughs> the rest of it depends on God. kill to get an extra ball? Nah. It's a test. Will I in desperation strike out at my little digital friends? No, I have before. Woo! Woo! Wow, you see that? Oh. Oops! <laughs> I clipped one, but I didn't mean to. If you look at the video, you'll see it didn't count.
That was a, that was a good and a bad all at the same time. If I can catch that last target on the left, right side, left side. <laughs> Again, it thinks straight, man. That that one over there. Look out. Patch is lit. Next city. Oh. Oh. Wow. Skills are definitely being tested here. <laughs> I'll try not to. I I should say will not. I don't intend to. Difference. 
accidents, even in God's law, are different between intentional things and non-intentional things. People don't realize that about God's law is that there's intentional, you know, stuff for intentional stuff, and then there's, you know, payments or whatever for unintentional stuff. Like, man, I just screwed up. All the huh, dramatic comments are only valuable to myself because you can't understand how fast I'm looking at the balls, thinking what I should do, deciding what to hit and flip, and what I perceive could have happened since I would have blown it if I didn't do exactly what I should, not or in some cases like that, didn't do. <laughs> Could have done better. Well, I had a viewer for five seconds. I don't know who this person is, man. They pop in for like a quarter split second and then they disappear like that fast. It's like, why do you come by, man? You, you know what I'm doing. I'm just not good enough or I don't get it. city first. This is a ball, isn't it? No. See, trying to save the one going out the side, lose the one down the middle. That's how it Getting pretty dark outside. Lord, can we have some thunder? Speak. 
I like it when you rumble with skies. I know it's you. Good save, if I can say so myself. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> no. Out of there! Out of there! No! Come on! Uh, yes, gladly. No, I will not run anybody over. I'm still on the third ball. And I actually have two extra balls left. I could get one if I want to go killing people right now, but I just don't want it. Whoop. Woof. Bad drive in there. Oh man, nice try. Look out, soldier. For one. You got it? Yeah. Okay, now this is an okay way to get the ball. Okay, we got our back up. And I got two more cities to go to Milwaukee. So here's what'll happen. I'll knock down those two targets on the left side, I think. And then what'll happen is right before I get the last one, it will dump me somehow into Harley Multiball to make it exciting. Oh, oh, I got them both at once. Well, yeah, well, I'll take that. I lied. <laughs> A false prophet. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get him. The, the way the game usually goes, <laughs> the game made me a liar. The way the game usually goes is like you, uh, it's, it, you know, it's just a computer program, right? So it, um, uh, no. Red light multiball. Get one of them. It decides to rob you of the next city trick. And, uh, like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it. It really seems that way. <laughs> and I thought I knew what was going on. Guess what I fell victim of? Familiar spirit. Uh, 
like, yeah. I should have never said, right? Still, everything's still ain't in the bag. I still gotta hit the next city. Well, nothing's in the bag, but I still gotta hit the next city. And then that one. Man, I'm dropping balls like, like Lance Dreyer, or not Lance Dreyer, uh, Lance Long. No, not Lance Long. Who was the guy? The, uh, the bicycle guy. The, 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 oh, shit, man. I'm like really blowing it. I said, nothing's written in stone. Six is man's number, five is God's number of grace. You give man grace, chaos. There's Denver. Next stop, Milwaukee. Whoa. You give man grace, typically doesn't turn out well. That's because he doesn't understand what it's for. It's not to be taken advantage of. And I got the next city. <sighs> mm, like that. Milwaukee. We made it. Down to the third ball and still made it. Oh, uh, how is that? Now, we can only get the, the dreaded Milwaukee jackpot. There's one. There's two. <laughs> you just can't get it. Anybody has ever gotten this? I, I want to look, but I don't want to look. The reason I don't want to look is because then I'll know it's been done. And if I know it's been done, that changes the game because guess what happens? As soon as you know something's been done, you know it's not impossible. And it gives you this weird strength thing. It, it helps you because it's like, I know it can be done. And then once you know it can be done, guess what happens? It's you know, the, the game is over because it's like, you know, it's no longer a, you know, the, the, the part of uh, unbelief is taken away because your eyes have proved to you that it can actually be done. Oops. <laughs> I'm over here shaking the machine trying to get the guy into the next lane. <laughs> nice. And actually, that's what God does. <laughs> shakes the foundation. He shakes the machine to get you to move. To guide you. 
it says the pillars of the earth, you know, the pillars of the foundation are shaken. It's it's not a bad thing. It means that he's throwing it out there in an undeniable fashion. Basic taking the, everything of what it is that you know. The machine, the the construct, the world, existence, all of creation. And he's stuffing it in your face in a way that you just can't get it. Or wouldn't otherwise. So that then you're like going, okay, I have to accept this because it happened. <laughs> it was able to be done. I can't deny my freaking eyeballs. But your eyeballs can also lead you in a bad way. Because they make you see things that cause you to not trust God. And to judge and deny what it is it can be. And so you wind up, you know, ruining what it is you're trying to build because you're afraid of what it is that might destroy what is your building. <laughs> it's terrible. It is a freaking vicious circle like you can't believe. It. It's all about faith, man. It is all about faith in God. <laughs> it's terrible. It's it's the... Well, actually, listen to what I just said. It's terrible. What do they call it? The great and terrible day of the Lord. <laughs> and it is. It's both. It's both of those things, and all at once. It's good and bad. It's a good and bad sandwich. You take a bite, and depending on how it is that you want it to taste, there it is. <laughs> now I want food. See you, Detroit. Oh, wow, look at this. It's not usual you get an extra ball after going to Milwaukee. That's like not, not, not a common thing. That's how, that's how crummily I've been paying, playing the... the how crummily I've been playing the game. <laughs> if there's a such word as crummily. <laughs> ah, God is good. Thank you for allowing me to laugh at myself, Lord. Because, <laughs> like, compared to you, <coughs> we are a joke. Wow, it's really getting dark out there, but I'm not hearing any thunder. played the game and not been giving a commentary at the same time. There you go. We're done. But we made it to Milwaukee and even had... It was fun, right? Uh-oh. I thought I was going to have to play again. John. Uh, John 4, 5 to 8. Isaiah 19, 7. Psalm 2. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good, good luck. Psalm 90... Two. Have a blessed day. I'm out. Just remember, we live in a duality. There's good, there's evil. We have to accept both. That's as for Job. We know that God created both. That's as for Isaiah 45, 7. 
<sighs> Sorry. I'm moving around, the carbonation is going to foam up. Um, and so we have to work with these in the in the bounds of these two things that God creates and makes. And if we're made in His image, we have to remember one very simple thing: that as per Psalm one thirty nine twelve, God doesn't look at these two things in in the same way that man does. He doesn't see good and evil as anything more, or the two different lights. Put that way. He doesn't see these two different lights, light, greatest light, good, darker light, lesser light, angel of light, bad. He doesn't see them in that way. He just sees them as opportunity to do, to be, to love. And uh, when we can understand that people that are falling into bad ways, they need a doctor. They need a doctor. They need help. They don't need somebody to point a finger and make fun of them, accuse them of their wrongdoing and so on. God's got that covered, okay? All right, I'm out, guys. I love you. Shalom.